teacher at uh, Montclair State University and I watched your video and loved it. I thought your uh, you know preparation and your musicality show through and it's nice to see um, somebody putting some time in on on a you know worthy instrument like the string bass. <laughs> so let's get started with that first. Uh, I'll give you a couple of suggestions. Um, you, uh, you, your technique is is cool for playing up on the on the top of the bass. I just want to make sure that you know that there's other places to play on the bass. Um, the yeah, you were you were kind of like your hand was up here. And, and that's all good. You know, that's like cool for soloing, right? Um, your intonation is mostly good, especially for somebody in high school. Uh, be careful. Uh, I noticed you had dots on your neck, which are great. You know, that really, really does help. Uh, you know, intonation is something that we constantly, as bass players, I mean, I've been playing for a million years, and I, I still question my intonation sometimes so you're going to keep working on that okay um and and although you had a beautiful whatever the melody was on that tune it was a, it was a beautiful you know sound and and everything's cool i just want to make sure that you know that when you're playing in a band you can't really do that and effectively project the uh the the feel of the of the instrument. Basically, it's this: you're uh, an acoustic bass player is like a bass player that is like a drummer that has movable pitches, right? So you have to have that that serious thump in the in the uh, attack of the note, which would mean playing closer to the fingerboard where the sting the string is a little stiffer. So, you know, maybe that's the case. Maybe you. you Maybe you're doing that in in uh, in your ensemble playing, and if so, great. If not, then you need to incorporate that in. I would not lose your your beautiful thumb position thing. Um, just know that you know you're not going to get hired to play solos. You're going to get hired to accompany others. So, <laughs> if you want to get jobs which kind of is part of the deal, then you need to be a good bass player first, right? So that means accompanying other people. Um, also, I would like you to um, use your pinky more. You'll, you'll find as you get older, it's way stronger than the third finger. The third finger really doesn't have anything. So, you know, you ended your last note, I don't know, somewhere around C, and you were on the third finger, and... Generally speaking, we don't even use the third finger below, I'd say, you know, the E on the G string. You know, I, 
I use it in thumb position all the time. Because the, the pinky won't reach, but down here, everything is like, you know, kind of traditional uh, Samandel type fingerings, you know, like one, two, four, you know, so. get in thumb position then you then you have to go to three okay so um, and I can also give you a little hint and this would go for the improvisation on either team town or uh, little train um, which is rhythmically speaking uh, you start a lot of your phrases on beat one and you know this is rhythmic music so you kind of want to maybe not do that it's like syncopated music you know so um, maybe make a conscious effort to um, practice some some lines that start, you know, like on the end of two and maybe end on one instead of the other way around. So, um, uh, and I actually think that the, the magic bullet for that would be to um, um, transcribe copy other soloists, horn players in particular, they're really good at, at giving you good rhythmic ideas and, uh, you know, find a solo that doesn't have a million sixteenth notes in it and, uh, or a million thirty-second notes or whatever those guys play, <laughs> you know. But, um, you know, getting gathering rhythmic information from those that have came before you is a really good idea. Um, uh, team time, team town, <laughs> excuse me, uh, I gotta hurry this because people are outside the door here. Um, your left hand is not leading the time. I put this in the comments, actually, probably everything I'm saying is in the comments. But yeah, the, the idea is that the right hand plucks the string, but the left hand is already down, and that's what was kind of happening on. If you felt, I don't know if you felt it, but I did kind of right away. When you would play the notes, your right hand looked great. You know, it was like doing doing the thing, but the left hand wasn't down yet. So you get a little pop on the front of the note, a little thuck. Makes the notes a little clunky and not so in the pocket, right? Because as you know, as a bass player, the most important job we do is to play really good, accurate time. Right, it like you listen to Jaco, but 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 do that, do 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 You know everything is baba da da. Right, it can't. It's got to be. So, rule of thumb for both bases: lead the time with your left hand, and you can practice this by uh, playing chromatic scales up. You know, without plucking the string. It's like one little silly thing, but just, you know, sometimes just thinking about it while you're playing, like playing a scale. If I don't get the note down here first before I pluck it here, it's going to, it's going to feel a little funny. Uh, so, you know, those are a couple little things. Remember time is of the essence. Um, it seems like you have really great musicality and your your time is fine and everything else. You need some polish, young man. <laughs> and uh, just um, lead the time with the left hand. Don't always start on one. Use your fourth finger. You'll, you'll find three and four kind of go together. Uh, you'll find that it's the strongest, one of the strongest fingers you have. Um, and, you know, that's that's about it. If you have any questions, you know, find me. I live right outside New York City. I've been here a long time. All right, my man, uh, take it easy. I'll see you next time, all right?